How about going deep, deep into the past? To the times before humans existed, before the infamous asteroid hit Earth, wiping off three-fourths of life forms on the planet, even before the sun ignited or galaxies appeared in the darkness of the cosmos. So, before light could even shine, there was the Big Bang. It happened 13.8 billion years ago. But what was before that? Some scientists are sure that there was no before. Time started ticking as soon as the Big Bang occurred. We're unlikely to ever figure out what reality was like before that, if any. This is beyond human understanding. But there are those who disagree. Some unconventional scientists theorize that just a moment before the Big Bang, all the energy and mass of the nascent universe could be compacted into an insanely dense but still finite speck. Let's imagine it as a seed of a new universe. And this seed, a chunk of essential material, compressed and hidden in a protective shell, was created nowhere else but inside a black hole. Black holes spin incredibly fast, probably close to the speed of light. Such a spin can give the tightly compacted seed a ginormous amount of torsion. So the seed isn't just tiny and extra heavy, it's also compressed and twisted, which means that it can suddenly unspring with a big bang. Now, let's say you add up the energy and mass of all the particles the visible universe contains. And then, you try to figure out the answer to the following question. How big could the event horizon of a black hole with the same mass be? The event horizon is the point of no return. Once you cross this invisible line, there's no way back, even for light. But let's get back to our question. Shockingly, such an event horizon would be very close in size to the actual horizon of the observable universe. There's also this idea that became well known thanks to Stephen Hawking. According to it, every time a black hole appears in our universe, it probably gives rise to a baby universe. But you would only be able to visit such a universe if you crossed the event horizon and plunged inside the black hole. And as you know, once you did it, you wouldn't be able to return. In other words, right now, we might be living in a baby universe. But if some outsider is observing us at the moment, our world looks to them like a regular black hole. So in short, there could be a very old mother universe that forged a seed inside a black hole. This seed had its big bounce all those billions of years ago, and as a result, our universe came into existence. But even though since then it has kept growing and expanding, we might still be hidden behind the event horizon of our home black hole. There's also another idea. According to string theory, there's a multiverse of universes. Imagine our universe as a soap bubble. This bubble keeps expanding, and we live on its surface. String theory claims that our bubble isn't unique. There might be other bubbles out there. And all these bubbles move around, collide, sprout, or bud baby bubbles. In short, live their life. If we follow this theory, we might suppose that black holes are one-way doors between universes. And if you accidentally tumbled down the black hole in our home Milky Way galaxy, you'd end up in another universe. Or rather, not you, but what's left of you after falling through the insane weirdness of the black hole. In this case, this second universe wouldn't be inside ours. It would exist separately, and the black hole would merely be the link connecting them, like a shared route between two aspen trees. Whatever the truth, the danger is still there, lurking in the shadows. What if the black hole we live in decides to collapse? What if it pulls us deeper inside? Or if our world is just a bubble among trillions of other bubbles? What if it bursts one day? If you somehow fell into a black hole, it might change your future and erase your past. Well, at least theoretically. Let's start with the real world we live in. Here on planet Earth, your past can definitely define your future. But imagine you're not on Earth, but somewhere out there in the endless universe, and you stumble upon a certain type of black hole. The one hmm. that a UC Berkeley mathematician found. Not to mix it with a regular black hole, let's call this type... What about a benign black hole, huh? So here's why you need a specific black hole. Thing is, you're highly unlikely to stay alive in a regular black hole. But according to some calculations made by a postdoctoral fellow, hints from UC Berkeley, this specific type of black holes we agree to call benign ones might expand at an accelerating rate. This is what makes it possible to survive the transition from our deterministic world to a black hole, which is not deterministic. Hmm. 
Let's imagine you survived that passage, and now you're moving towards the center of a benign black hole. It's impossible to picture what's inside, and if you, as a traveler, could actually get into a black hole, you'd never be able to communicate to the outer world what interesting things are hidden in it. But it's not what interests us for now. We need to know how to get rid of the past. Hence, the mathematician you already know studies non-rotating black holes that have an electric charge. The most important thing about them is that besides the event horizon, they also have the Kochi horizon. And here's the point. The Kochi horizon is the place where so-called determinism simply breaks down. This may sound too scientific, but let me explain it to you. The Kochi horizon is the place where your past doesn't determine your future any longer. So, here's a mathematically proven and apparently working method of how to get rid of your past. All you need to do is get into space, find a specific black hole, make it to the center, and get to the Kochi horizon. However, if it sounds too complicated, you can simply try not to make mistakes here on Earth. Yeah, ideas like, your past gets cancelled, you have an infinite amount of options of how your future will evolve, and all that jazz sounds as unrealistic as they are appealing. Like, imagine no one knows you failed to get into college and get a degree, but from now on, you have every opportunity to do whatever you want. But only theoretically. In reality, once you get into the black hole, not that specific one we've already talked about, you're most likely to disappear once and for all. But hey, don't be sad. I'm only talking about your current physical form. It's a bit deeper than it might seem. Thing is, there's a curious principle of quantum mechanics that can be explained in a simple way. For starters, imagine that you're not a human being, but just information. You have your experience, your background, and your thoughts. All of these are the information you are. Now, let's make it even simpler. Imagine a USB drive or a book. Both of these things contain information. If you smash a USB drive that contains music and movies, it won't exist anymore in its physical form. But the information it had will never stop existing. Same with the book. If you burn it, the information it has doesn't get burned. It continues to exist, but in another form. So, this fun theory claims that even though someone passes the horizon of events, which is a point of no return before you get spaghettified, they don't stop existing. In simple words, these universe travelers still exist, but in the form of information. Now let's go back to the black holes. According to Stephen Hawking, black holes emit radiation. Radiation makes them shrink, and with time, I mean much time, a black hole can shrink so much that it eventually disappears. So what happens to the astronaut who got entangled in a black hole if it disappears? Nope, they won't be ejected from the black hole in the way they used to exist. However, they will still be ejected from there, but in the form of parking radiation. But it's just a theory. Right, you remember that no one knows exactly what happens in the black hole? Another theory says that what happens in the black hole doesn't really stay in the black hole. Sounds like a good alternative to Las Vegas if all the flights for the weekends have been booked. Some scientists believe that a black hole might have a portal where you can turn back time. According to this theory, there's a white hole at the end of a black hole. If you get there, you can undo things. Like, you broke your mom's favorite vase? Hop into the white hole and it'll be as good as new there. You cooked a scramble and made a fresh orange juice, but somehow lost your appetite? It's not a problem if you cook it inside a white hole. Voila! The eggs are unbroken. The oranges are uncut and juicy again. No more food waste. All right, turning back time sounds really cool. So I guess we might actually need a black hole to help us out. If a black hole was made in a, let's say, lab, it could devour things until it grew big enough to consume the entire planet. First, it would munch on the Large Hadron Collider, which might possibly create something similar to a black hole here on Earth. Next, Geneva, where the Large Hadron Collider is located. Then the whole country of Switzerland, then Europe. At that point, it wouldn't be long before the Earth was gone too. Luckily, if a black hole did appear, it would be so small that it wouldn't be able to do anything. 
black holes actually produce a lot of energy and release it, often as heat, like a furnace. That means they will fade away when they run out of fuel. Even if a stable microscopic black hole was created, it would grow so slowly that nothing would happen. Assuming that it survived long enough to absorb the tiny particles around it, a black hole of this size would take super long to get even a pound of weight. I won't be around then. But a black hole on Earth could be a great thing. Even a relatively small one may emit enough energy to completely power humanity. We're talking a lot about food, huh? Let's not forget about spaghettification. The concept is quite simple, by the way. It's all about gravity. Imagine you're playing with chewing gum. With your force, you could easily stretch it so instead of a regular piece, you can get a long and thin one. The same happens to you. Black hole force is enough to stretch you as if you were a piece of chewing gum. Gravity holds you tight on one side, which makes you stretch. You may wonder, how come you don't get spaghettified on Earth if there's gravity too? Easy peasy. It's just too weak to do that with you. If you asked a butterfly to stretch the gum, would it be able to do that? Not likely. Their tiny limbs are just too weak. Same here. The Earth is just too weak compared to a black hole. So if you are wondering whether you'll ever reach 6 foot 6, it may never happen on Earth. But once you're in a black hole, you can go far beyond those mere 6 foot 6 inches. Your best height moment won't last long though. If you stretch the chewing gum at one moment, it will simply tear apart. The same will happen to you because of spaghettification. A black hole is an eerie place where those laws of physics we studied at school stop working. If a massive star runs out of its fuel, it sometimes becomes super dense and buckles under its own weight, collapsing inward and bringing space-time along. As a result, the gravitational field of this new object gets so strong that nothing can escape it, not even light. That's how a black hole is born. The black holes closest to our planet are called Gaia BH1 and Gaia BH2. They were discovered thanks to the data collected by the European Space Agency's Gaia spacecraft, hence their names. Both are about 9 to 10 times more massive than our Sun and are located a mere 1,560 and 3,800 light years away, respectively. In cosmic terms, they're situated in Earth's backyard. And there's something seriously wrong about these black holes. So, should you pack your emergency bag? Let's find out! The remarkably close black holes are likely to represent a previously unknown category of these mysterious objects. What sets them apart from others is that they're orbited by stars at much greater distances than scientists have observed previously, in other black hole companion star pairings. Normal black hole companion star systems are known as X-ray binaries. They are usually bright in radio and high-energy X-ray emissions. They swallow matter and emit powerful bursts of energy, which makes them pretty easy to spot. Now, why did it take astronomers so long to spot these massive black holes residing right inside our home Milky Way galaxy? All because they're almost invisible. In the past, astronomers spotted black holes by looking for the remnants of their meals. The thing is that when a star or even a cloud of interstellar gas is pulled into a black hole, it leaves behind a trail of electromagnetic radiation. And scientists use it to detect the presence of a black hole. But unlike other holes discovered before, Gaia BH1 and BH2 are pitch black. They don't seem to be snacking on anything at the moment. This makes them inactive or dormant. So astronomers had to use another method. They tracked the movement of two companion stars orbiting these cosmic monsters. The stars, similar to our sun, wobbled a bit while traveling through space. To researchers, it was a sign that something with a lot of gravity like another star was tugging on them. Interestingly, when they examined the area with the help of telescopes, they didn't find anything emitting radiation. 
so the whole situation only made sense if there was a black hole involved in the process. Luckily, Gaia is perfect for spotting invisible black holes. Thanks to its state-of-the-art equipment, it can accurately measure the motion and position of billions of stars. No other instrument is capable of such precision. Gaia's observations were backed up by the data received later by other observatories. For instance, NASA's Chandra X-ray Observatory, as well as the South African Meerkat Radio Telescope, revealed no visible light coming from Gaia BH2. So even though they detected nothing, it was still valuable information. It told astronomers a lot about the environment around the black hole. A lot of particles are coming towards it from the companion star in the form of stellar wind. But the researchers didn't spot any radio light. It means that the black hole doesn't have much of an appetite, and not many particles cross its event horizon, or the point of no return. Unfortunately, it's still unclear why that is. Anyway, should we be worried about those mysterious black holes lurking in the darkness of space so close to our planet? I've got some good news. There's absolutely no reason to worry. First of all, these black holes are sleeping at the moment. And it doesn't look like they're going to wake up anytime soon. Secondly, they're still too far away to affect our life. And it's not like black holes know how to travel. Brace yourself. You're about to hear one of the most unusual sounds ever. It's come from space, and it's the sound of two black holes colliding. But first things first. Our ears are designed in a special way, which helps us translate sound waves. But these sound waves become mute once the medium they're traveling through comes to an end. It happens when, for example, the atmosphere of Earth gives way to the vastness and emptiness of the cosmos. At the same time, there are some sound waves that can move even through a vacuum. And we can translate these vacuum-friendly waves into sounds our human ears can hear. That's kind of like radio transmissions work. Over the past few decades, people have sent quite many satellites to the far reaches of the solar system and even beyond. These spacecraft are equipped with sensors designed to hear such things as radio and plasma waves flowing freely through interplanetary space. These instruments are crucial for research and communication reasons. An additional bonus is that now we can finally hear different kinds of space waves as audible sounds. The results are often ear-splitting sounds, and sometimes audios are downright scary. Usually, when two black holes collide, they don't produce a sound. And still, thanks to modern technologies, we can now listen to this terrifying cosmic event. Do you hear it? This chirping sound is the sound that two black holes produced while slamming into each other around a billion light years away from our planet. Interestingly, the tone of the sound rises when the holes spiral closer to each other and stops abruptly when they eventually merge. Now, do you hear that long, low buildup? It means that the merger is quite slow, more sedate, and the black holes taking part in this event are relatively lightweight. A more abrupt chirp is a sign of a fast merger, where the black holes are rather large. For example, the pair that produced this sound combined and created one black hole more than 80 times the mass of the sun. Since each of these black holes weighed as much as several stars, they were hefty enough to produce waves while passing through space. I mean gravitational waves. They are undulations in the fabric of space-time, fanning outward at the speed of light. You can probably compare them to the ripples that appear on the surface of a pond after you throw a rock in the water. Naturally, the sound of black holes colliding isn't the only unusual noise recorded by our equipment. NASA's Juno probe passes by Jupiter every few weeks at a speed of up to 130 miles per hour and plows through all kinds of invisible fields in the process. And one of the most powerful signals it has recorded is Jupiter's bow shock. That's the point where the planet's magnetic field pushes against the incoming wind of solar particles. The sound produced during this standoff sounds similar to a sonic boom. Or this sound. It was produced by the Stardust space probe when it was passing through the dust left by Comet Temple 1. In the process, debris hit the body of the spacecraft. 
It sounded as if some creature was rapping at the window or hurrying across a hard floor. Let's have a look at NASA's nuclear-powered Cassini spaceship. It spent 13 years exploring gas giant Saturn and its numerous potentially habitable moons. This mysterious and a bit spooky sound is actually radio waves emitted by the massive planet. Such waves are caused by a phenomenon which is similar to the one producing auroras on Earth. Speaking of our own planet, it's surrounded by plasma. It consists of hot, ionized particles generated by sunlight. They're constantly slamming into Earth's atmosphere. NASA's polar mission, which was launched a few decades ago, managed to record this breath-like hiss. That's what plasma orbiting our planet sounds like. As for these weird sounds, NASA doesn't say which space probe recorded them, but they're coming from Jupiter's largest moon, Ganymede. It could have been the Galileo spacecraft, which orbited the system for around eight years. But it probably doesn't matter so much. Just listen to this creepy noise that sounds like screams trying to break through from some hidden place. are terrifyingly dense space objects, pulling inside everything that comes too close. Nothing can escape their clutches, even a beam of light. At the same time, black holes are some of the most mysterious objects in the universe. According to their mass, black holes are usually divided into three categories. Stellar black holes have a mass from a few to hundreds of times the mass of the Sun. Intermediate black holes should range from 100 to hundreds of thousands of times the sun's mass. Scientists are now actively hunting these missing link black mysteries. But the real behemoths of the cosmos are supermassive black holes. They have hundreds of thousands to billions of times the mass of our sun. Most supermassive black holes lie in the centers of their home galaxies. You can probably say that they sit in the gravitational driving seat. Meanwhile, hundreds of billions of stars, planets, and moons orbit them. Let's have a look at the biggest black holes astronomers have found so far. NGC 6166 is a monster that has grown to have a mass of 30 billion solar masses. It's actually an elliptical galaxy that has an active nucleus in the center. It's also one of the most luminous sources of X-rays. The galaxy's supermassive black hole powers two symmetric radio jets in the opposite direction, which is the result of the infall of gas into its center. Another peculiar thing about NGC 6166 is that it shows a blue shift, which means it's moving toward us. The next supermassive black hole is located in the constellation of Draco, approximately 10.4 gigalight years from us. The mass of this supergiant is more than 30 billion solar masses. Besides being incredibly massive, the black hole is also really big. If it replaced our sun, the diameter of this hole would extend to the orbit of Pluto. This S5 Theora 1481 is one of the most interesting black holes on our list. It has a mass of 40 billion solar masses and is actually a blazer, the most energetic of all quasars, which are super bright distant objects. The blazar's luminosity is 300 trillion times that of the sun and more than 25,000 times as great as the luminosity of all 100 to 400 billion stars of the Milky Way galaxy combined. But since the distance to this quasar is about 12.1 billion light years, we can't see it directly. But we know that the central black hole of the quasar consumes huge amounts of matter, about 4,000 solar masses of material every year. Phi C1101 is a supergiant elliptical galaxy. 
It's the most massive known galaxy so far. Since this galaxy is elliptical, it isn't filled with gas. That's why the star formation in that region is very low. As for the black hole at the center of IC 1101, it has a mass of 40 to 100 billion solar masses and emits clear radio signals. Recently, astronomers have discovered a gravitational space wonder that has swollen to really unimaginable proportions. The black hole I'm talking about is Ton 618, and it's a mind-boggling 66 billion solar masses. The thing is so massive that astronomers had to think of a new term to describe it. They came up with an ultramassive black hole. Imagine gathering all the stars in our home Milky Way galaxy and squishing the matter they're made of into one black hole, and it still won't be enough to create a ton 618. If this monster of a black hole replaced the sun, its radius would be more than 40 times the size of Neptune's orbit. You probably know that black holes are made of matter packed together as densely as possible. And still, it doesn't mean that black holes are some kind of space predator, roaming galaxies and munching on everything they come across. Ton 618 still has a whole galaxy filled with stars and other stuff happily orbiting it without getting pulled inside. What I want to say is that the perception of black holes as giant vacuum cleaners is wrong. In reality, it's incredibly hard to grow a black hole. Try to do it and you'll see. What if the sun, our precious source of light and heat, got swallowed by a black hole? Or even more worrying, what if such a black hole was brewing inside our star right now? Would the sun eventually collapse in on itself pulling along everything in the solar system? Well, if a medium-sized stellar black hole formed by the gravitational collapse of a star swallowed the sun, we would only have around eight minutes before things went haywire. But if our star swallowed a tiny primordial black hole, we could probably have a chance to survive. The existence of primordial black holes hasn't been confirmed yet. These hypothetical black holes are believed to have formed right after the universe was born. Unlike supermassive or even stellar mass black holes, primordial ones are typically tiny. Their mass is roughly the same as the mass of an asteroid, and their size is no larger than that of a baseball. You can find primordial black holes in a few theoretical models, which have been used in attempts to explain loads of mysterious space stuff, from hypothetical planet X to dark matter. There's actually a theory that primordial black holes could actually be dark matter. If primordial black holes indeed existed, they could appear because some regions of space were hotter, others were cooler, and some areas were extremely dense. Scientists believe these dense spots could collapse into primordial black holes. The most curious thing, though? These holes might be so small, exactly, because they popped up right after the Big Bang. The thing is, the longer it took a black hole to appear, the larger it was. The mass difference between older, smaller, and younger, bigger black holes was incredible. Compare the mass a thousand times greater than our suns and that of a pea. There you go. By now, the smallest primordial black holes have most likely evaporated away, but some bigger ones can still be scattered out there in space. Many theoretical models claim that primordial black holes are so common that it's kind of inevitable for a random star to capture one. Such stars with black holes at their centers are known as Hawking stars. So, what might happen after such an accidental acquisition? At first, a captured primordial black hole isn't likely to have any effect on a sun-like star. After all, compared to our massive star, an asteroid's worth of mass might as well be a speck of dust. The black hole simply isn't able to consume much of the sun, but with time, its persistent presence in the heart of the star can start affecting things. The black hole is likely to begin consuming matter in the stellar core, growing over time. If this process is fast enough on a cosmological scale, the black hole can end up swallowing the star completely. If the process is too slow, it might still influence the development and lifespan of the star. Mostly, it depends on the initial size of the primordial black hole. A large one with around a billionth of the solar mass 
can potentially consume a star in less than half a billion years. If something like that has ever happened, there must be solar mass black holes out there, too small to have been created by supernovae like regular stellar black holes. If the primordial black hole is way smaller, a trillionth of the solar mass, things might get complicated. This tiny hole will keep munching on the star's core, but at a very slow pace. And still, it will stir things up in the core of the star, making it heat up more than usual. Eventually, the host star will swell into something cooler and redder than usual red giant stars. Plus, the turbulence at its core is likely to affect the surface activity of the star. Since we haven't observed anything like this happening to our sun, it's very unlikely that there's a primordial black hole at its center. But we can't say for sure that there aren't other stars hurtling through space, carrying primordial black holes in their hearts. Black holes are some of the most enigmatic and sinister phenomenon in the universe. They can swallow up entire stars and planets, bending the very fabric of space and time. But what if Earth, our home planet, were to be caught in the grip of a black hole's event horizon? Hmm. What would we see before the inevitable end? Well, let's have a look-see, okie dokie. So a black hole is like the bully on the playground. You avoid them at all costs. It's a region of space where gravity is so strong that nothing, not even light, can escape it. It's like Houdini in reverse. As with snowflakes, every black hole is unique. Each one has its own mass, spin, and charge. And they also come in different sizes, sort of like jeans. Petite, slim, regular, and husky, or something. Anyway, there are four sizes. The smallest black holes are the stellar mass kind. They're born when the massive star runs out of juice and folds in on itself. They're like the chihuahuas of the black hole world. They may be tiny, but they're feisty. They gobble up nearby matter like a hungry puppy. And even the smallest one is three times more massive than our sun. Next up, we have the middle children of this cosmic family. Intermediate mass black holes. They're too big to be born out of collapsed stars. Scientists believe that they may be created when several black holes merge into one. And even though they can't dominate galaxies, at least they can swallow up some nearby stars. Goody for them, huh? But do you know who can dominate a galaxy? The enormous monsters of our universe, supermassive black holes. They're the giants with masses ranging from hmm, millions to billions of times that of our sun. And they play a crucial role in the growth and formation of their host galaxies. Finally, there are ultra-massive black holes. Trust me, you can't even imagine the size and mass of these guys. These cosmic eldritch horrors are extremely rare, but the ones we know can devour entire galaxies like uh, Pac-Man. So what happens if you get too close to a black hole? Or more like, what would you see in your last moments? Well. First, you reach an event horizon. It's like a point of no return, an invisible boundary that marks the edge of a black hole. And here's where things start to get really weird. For example, time starts to slow down. Not for you, for an outsider watching you from a safe distance. If you were falling into a black hole, you wouldn't feel any different. But if you were watching someone else fall into it, you'd see them slow down and eventually freeze in time like in a paused video. As you get even closer, you would start to see some pretty mind-bending things. The gravity would cause the light around you to bend and distort, creating a sort of funhouse mirror effect. You might even see a halo of light around the black hole, known as the photon ring, or jets of high-energy particles spewing out from the black hole's poles. You can actually get pretty close to a black hole without feeling any major effects. It's only when you cross the event horizon that there's no going back. Your goose is cooked. After crossing this boundary, you'd be unable to see anything. For the person watching you from the outside, it would be as if you had suddenly disappeared. Meanwhile, you might start feeling a bit stretched out, like a piece of spaghetti. This is because the gravity is so stark 
that it's pulling you in different directions at once. There's even a scientific term for it called spaghettification. We'll cover linguinification in another video. Now that you're inside a black hole, you're taking aim at the singularity. It's a point of infinite density in its center, where all matter is crushed down to a single point. It's like trying to fit an elephant into a tiny matchbox. Everything gets squished together until it's as small as it can possibly be. Which means it's time to wave goodbye, I guess. And if all that sounds scary, here's another fun fact. Black holes are not rare at all. Actually, there's one in the center of each galaxy, including our own Milky Way. So, does it mean that we'll eventually be sucked into it? And if so, how exactly would it happen? Well, let's see. Imagine a black hole approaching our solar system. At first, it appears as nothing more than a tiny speck in the distance. But as it gets closer and closer, its gravitational pull begins to wreak havoc around. Planets start to veer off course, asteroids are flung into oblivion, and comets are shattered into a million pieces. But just like waiting for the sauces to be served in a German restaurant, the worst is yet to come. Yeah, like that joke. Soon, it inevitably reaches the Earth. First, our planet's atmosphere would be pulled toward the black hole, triggering a massive windstorm. And there would be huge waves on the oceans, the water itself being distorted by gravitational forces. Imagine seeing seas and oceans getting stretched out. Earth's magnetic field is generated by the motion of molten iron in the planet's core. But now, the extreme tidal forces of the black hole would disrupt this motion causing the magnetic field to weaken and distort. All this would cause massive earthquakes and volcanic eruptions, as the planet's crust and mantle were pulled apart. All infrastructure and technology would be completely destroyed. Buildings, bridges, and roads would be torn apart. Okay, let's hit the pause button. Pretty horrifying, isn't it? Nah, but don't worry. You wouldn't have even seen that much because you would have felt the effects of the black hole much, much earlier. Well, back to the future. We'll lose our magnetic field even before everything started to collapse. And this means not only that the weather and climate will become terrible, we'll also be exposed to extreme radiation. These gamma rays and the heat from the black hole could drastically change our planet. Say ta-ta to all our beautiful nature. At least, misery loves company we won't be the only ones affected by a black hole, which is probably even worse. As this beast engulfed the entire solar system, it would consume about everything. One immediate effect would be the disruption of the orbits of asteroids, comets, and all the other bodies. The planets would begin to deform and stretch, their surfaces warping like molten metal. The Sun itself would be affected, its surface contorting like a glob of putty. And yeah, all this is scary even to imagine. But now, breathe and relax. Because none of this will ever happen. This is the bright side, remember? <laughs> Your infinitesimal odds of winning the big lottery are even better than the Earth ever being swept into a black hole. The nearest black hole to our solar system is called Gaia BH1. Discovered by scientists in 2022, it's found in our own Milky Way galaxy about 1,600 light-years away from Earth. Gaia BH1 is about 10 times the mass of our Sun, which makes it a stellar-mass black hole. It's not very interesting on its own, but its discovery has supplied valuable insights into the behavior of these cosmic monsters. But as you can see, even the closest known black hole is over a 1,000 light-years away. They move very slowly, and they'll never get so close to our system to pose some kind of a threat. Hey, but didn't you say there's a black hole in the center of the Milky Way galaxy? Doesn't that mean it's going to eventually hoover up our entire galaxy, you may ask? Maybe not in that voice. Well, don't worry, the correct answer is no. The one in the center of our galaxy is called Sagittarius A star. You may remember it from that viral blurry photo that circled around the internet a few years ago. This black hole is indeed very massive and has a strong gravitational pull, like two 8th graders in love. However, it's still a small beam. It only affects objects that are close to it. 
the objects in the galaxy are all too big and move too fast to be pulled in by black holes. Nevertheless, they're still fascinating objects to study. Scientists are still trying to unlock the mysteries of black holes. And even though they'll never be dangerous to us, they're still a huge reminder of the incredible power of our universe. Now I think I'll turn my attention to the incredible power of chocolate. Now really, an object weighing billions of times the mass of our sun must be easy to find, right? Wrong. Unfortunately, it might not be that simple. Like in the case with a missing black hole. But let's travel to the galaxy cluster Abel 2261, hosting a supermassive black hole at its center. Or at least, that's where it's supposed to be. The main problem is this giant space phenomenon is nowhere to be found. Now, supermassive black holes are mega monsters, churning slowly at the center of their home galaxies. They gather tremendous clouds of gas and dust around them, which makes them swell up to sizes the human mind can't begin to imagine. If a supermassive black hole, like the one that dwells at the center of our home Milky Way galaxy, moved even a little bit closer to our solar system, we'd be doomed. The distance between this huge thing and Earth could be several dozens of light years, and still, it would wreak havoc on our planet. Earth, along with other things making up the solar system, would be tugged into the black hole's orbit and doomed to spin around it for eternity or longer. Hey, who knows, right? So, it's good that such black holes stay away from us at the moment. So, let's see what happened to that runaway supermassive black hole from that gigantic cluster of galaxies around 2.7 billion years away from our planet. Scientists have been looking for it with the help of NASA's Chandra X-ray Observatory and Hubble Space Telescope. But so far, no result. The main problem with finding a black hole is that it's, uh, well, black. And space is, you guessed it, black too. So there's no contrast whatsoever that could help astronomers spot the hole. But scientists haven't given up yet. After all, they have a lot of other technologies to find black holes, small and big, in the vastness of space. Some of these methods involve watching the stars orbiting black holes. Sometimes, it's a faint gravitational wave signal which is produced when two black holes collide. But the most reliable technique is watching dust and gas falling to their doom. The thing is, black holes are space objects with insane gravity. So, regions of space surrounding them are usually a bit chaotic, gas and dust getting pulled into the bottomless abyss, compressing and heating up. In the process, it releases a flood of X-ray radiation. So, astronomers look for extremely bright X-ray sources in the universe. Chances are, those are the last gasps of giant clumps of material before they disappear into a black hole. Then, why can't scientists find such X-ray signatures left by the black hole in Abel 2261? One of the most mysterious things about its disappearance is that radio telescopes have spotted some signs of massive plumes of superheated material launched at one point within the last 50 million years. These plumes were most likely caused by a large black hole, which is nowhere to be found these days. So, at the moment, we can only play a guessing game. Maybe two medium-sized black holes collided, pushing the newly merged giant out of the center of the galaxy. The observations of the stars in that galaxy have shown a clump of dense material a few thousand light-years away from the galaxy's core. Maybe it's the runaway black hole. But disappointingly, no X-ray signals are coming from that clump. Or the hole might still be there in its rightful place. But it's, you know, slumbering. If it doesn't get a fresh supply of gas and dust, it has nothing to feed on. As a result, it can't release a flood of x-rays. But again, the answer, do not disturb, the black hole is sleeping now, isn't very satisfying. Why isn't it getting its space food? What happened 50 million years ago? What is that clump of material speeding away from the galaxy center? So many questions, and no answers so far. At least, we know what black holes look like. Well, kind of. It's actually the shadow of a black hole's event horizon, visible against the glowing superheated material falling inside the hole. The first ever mugshot of a black hole appeared in 2019. But the data for its creation was collected in 2017. 
It took an international team, consisting of more than 200 astronomers, two years to assemble the image. We can admire this amazing space phenomenon thanks to a vast global network of telescopes called the Event Horizon Telescope Collaboration, or simply EHT. Why such a name? The thing is that the Event Horizon is a point of no return on the outskirts of a black hole. When something, for example, matter, radiation, or light, reaches this boundary, there is no way for it to escape the black hole's clutches. Anyway, to capture that very first image of a black hole, scientists created a virtual telescope that turned out as big as our planet by combining the power of eight powerful radio telescopes. But it wasn't an easy feat. The researchers had to simultaneously point the telescopes in a meticulously planned order with the help of precise atomic clocks set on each telescope. Plus, to keep the chances of rain and bad weather to a minimum, they even constructed the telescopes in super dry regions, such as the Atacama Desert in Chile and the South Pole. On each observation day, the telescope gathers roughly 350 terabytes of data. That's 10 times the amount of data collected every day at the Large Hadron Collider. But let's speak more about black holes themselves. There are stellar black holes, smaller but even more dangerous than their supermassive peers. They appear when stars that have run out of their star food fall into themselves. If a star used to be big enough, it keeps compressing and compressing some more, and voila! A baby stellar black hole is born. But even if I call such a hole a small one, it's still five to several tens of times heavier than the sun. Unlike their massive siblings, Hypothetical mini-black holes could be really tiny, not bigger than an atom. Even so, just one minuscule thing would have the mass of a thousand SUVs. One theory claims tons of micro-black holes could have been created right after the Big Bang and the beginning of the universe. Some scientists even go as far as to say that a couple mini-black holes pass through our planet every day. There is a supermassive black hole smack dab in the middle of our galaxy, the Milky Way. Its name is Sagittarius A star, and it's 4.3 million times as heavy as the Sun. And nope, we aren't going to be pulled into this hole. It's more than 26,000 light years from Earth, too far to have any influence on our planet. By the way, recently, astronomers have discovered that this supermassive black hole might be leaking. If it's true, it probably means that Sagittarius A star isn't a sleeping giant, as previously thought. It might still be active. And the leakage recorded by scientists may be the hole hiccuping while swallowing clouds of gas. Maybe we should burp this baby? If you ever find yourself near a black hole, hmm, get ready that time will significantly slow down. It may work for you if you aren't eager to grow older. Just don't let yourself be tugged beyond the point of no return. Another danger of hanging around a black hole is that it might start behaving like a massive galactic volcano. From time to time, black holes flare up, but instead of spewing lava, they produce enormous amounts of energy, and it makes gaping holes in the surrounding material and gas. A short time ago, scientists discovered one of the largest craters in the universe. Radio and X-ray telescopes detected a supermassive black hole that threw a temper tantrum many, many years ago. It happened in a galaxy cluster about 390 million light-years away from Earth. The crater left behind, which was actually a hole punched in the cluster's hot gas, could fit 15 Milky Way galaxies. Okay, mind blown, I'm out of here. You might think... Falling into a black hole is as easy as falling into a giant pit. But boy, is it a whole different ballgame. To actually fall into a black hole, you would need some incredible luck and a dash of wizardry. Moreover, if you were watching something fall into a black hole, you wouldn't even see it. Why? Well, let's try to understand the magic of physics. Falling into a black hole is really, really tricky. First of all, to even have a chance of doing this, you would need to aim perfectly and start your journey from very far away. It's like trying to hit a tiny target from a long distance. That's because black holes exist within galaxies, which are filled with other objects like stars, planets, and gas clouds. 
These objects have their own gravitational forces that can influence the path you need to take. It's like you have to carefully navigate through the room, avoiding bumping into others or getting pulled off course by their movements. In a similar way, when falling into a black hole, you need to navigate through the influences of other celestial objects. As you get closer, things get even more complicated. Making even the tiniest change in direction would require a tremendous amount of energy that you wouldn't be able to generate. It's like trying to steer a spaceship with no fuel left. This is because the black hole's gravitational pull is immensely strong. Once you pass the point called the event horizon, there is no coming back. You wouldn't be able to control anything. Now, even if you somehow manage to get on the right path and avoid all the obstacles, there's still a dangerous situation waiting for you. The intense heat and energy around the black hole, called plasma, would fry you as you get closer. So, you would need some impossibly strong protection to get even close to it. But not only is it nearly impossible to fall into a black hole, it's also impossible to see someone falling in it. Why? Let's find out. Imagine you're standing far away from a black hole, watching something getting closer and closer to the event horizon. As this thing, let's say it's a spaceship, falls into the black hole, two very strange things start happening. First, the color of the spaceship will change. You see, the gravity near a black hole is incredibly strong, much stronger than anything we experience here on Earth. This intense gravity affects everything around it, including light. Now, light has this fascinating property where it carries energy. But when light gets close to a black hole, the powerful gravitational pull starts sapping away its energy, kind of like stealing it, making light weaker. And you know how when you look at a beautiful sunset, the sun appears to be this warm reddish orange color? Well, that's because when sunlight travels through our atmosphere, it scatters and loses some of its higher energy bluish colors, leaving behind the redder ones. So when light loses energy, it tends to shift towards the red end of the color spectrum. The same thing happens near a black hole. The light from the spaceship loses energy due to the black hole's strong gravity. So the spaceship, which initially had its own color, starts looking redder and redder as it gets closer to the black hole. It's as if the black hole is casting its magical spell, changing the color of the spaceship itself. The second weird thing is related to time. According to a theory of general relativity, gravity can mess around with time itself. And it works in a very strange way, because none of you, not you, not people on board a spaceship, will feel this change. For you, an observer in this scenario, time is flowing just like it always does. You're just sitting there, sipping your space lemonade and watching the spaceship's journey. For people on a spaceship, things are the same. Their watch ticks away at a regular pace, and they go about their day as usual. But objectively, for you, it would be like watching a spaceship fall in slow motion. It will seem to you that it's been falling into a black hole for weeks or even years. You might turn 80 and the spaceship is still out there. Crazy, right? Now, if time slows down for the spaceship, it means the light it emits also slows down. So imagine someone on that spaceship flicking a flashlight on and off. But because time is moving so slowly, the light coming from the flashlight also moves in slow motion. It takes ages for each burst of light to reach your eyes. You'll be watching a spaceship as if you're watching a video in super slow motion. And when light takes longer to reach your eyes, it becomes weaker and dimmer, just like a fading star. So as the spaceship gets closer and closer to the black hole's event horizon, not only does it start looking redder, but it also appears dimmer. So it becomes harder and harder to see the spaceship as it gets closer to the black hole. It slowly fades away, like a disappearing act on the grandest stage of the universe. Pretty mind-boggling, isn't it? But that's all about you, the observer. And how are people on board doing? What do you actually experience when you fall into a black hole? As you get closer to the black hole, something really weird starts happening. The gravity near the black hole is so powerful that it stretches and warps everything around it. 
so the difference in gravitational pull between your head and feet becomes significant. This difference creates a tidal force, which stretches your body like a long, thin shape. It's a process that's scientifically called spaghettification. Essentially, you would be stretched into a human noodle. Being turned into spaghetti might sound fun for a pasta lover, but it's definitely not so great for an astronaut. Meanwhile, colors around you begin to warp and distort, creating a dazzling light show. It's like riding a roller coaster through a rainbow tunnel. Twists and turns, flashes and sparks. It's an exhilarating, mind-bending experience. And then what happens to you depends on the type of black hole. First, we have classical black holes. These are black holes that exist forever. If you fall into this black hole, it would take an incredibly long time to reach the center. The center would keep getting closer and closer, but you would need an almost infinite amount of time to reach it. So it would feel like your journey would never end. And then we have evaporating black holes. These black holes can evaporate over time due to a process called Hawking radiation. It's just like the ice cubes melting away. These black holes have a limited lifespan, and it's basically impossible to fall into one of them. As you approach the evaporating black hole, you find yourself hovering near its edge, the event horizon. It's like being stuck at the entrance of a super cool amusement park. But guess what? This amusement park is shrinking. The black hole is evaporating, and as it does, the event horizon gets smaller and smaller. So you stay right at the edge, tracking its every move, but you will forever stay in this event horizon without ever crossing it. But remember, once you pass the point of no return, there's no way back. You're on a one-way ticket to the mysterious heart of the black hole, the Singularity. At the Singularity, everything goes bonkers. Our current understanding of physics goes haywire, so it's a bit like entering a magic show. What happens once you reach the singularity? Is there anything on the other side of a black hole? We have no idea. It's a big mystery for us. But maybe we'll figure this out someday. So my friend, it's best to admire black holes from a safe distance and let your imagination soar with the incredible wonders they hold. Just remember to keep your pasta on your plate and not near these cosmic spaghetti makers. Somewhere. Deep underground in super-secret laboratories, scientists are trying to create a black hole. It looks like the latest experiment was a success. The black hole hovers above the desk for a moment, but then, in a split second, it swallows it whole. Uh-oh. After its meal, the black hole grows until it is out of control. Microscopes and test tubes fly into the dark void. Soon everything in the room has been consumed. Each time it eats, it grows bigger and bigger and attracts even larger objects. On the surface, people go about their day as usual. Some joggers stop their run when they see a giant black sphere growing in the distance. Houses are torn from their foundations, and cars fly through the air towards the black abyss. In just a few minutes, the black hole has enveloped our entire planet. Then it grows big enough to consume the Moon and Mars. The black hole is now heavier than anything in our solar system. All of the planets begin to circle it, before becoming food for the monster. Finally, even the sun is extinguished in the belly of the beast. Well, that was pretty bleak. Eh, don't worry. This isn't how the scenario would play out in real life. Our scientists may actually be capable of creating a black hole, but it's far safer than this. The effort to make a black hole is led by the scientists working in Geneva on something called the Large Hadron Collider. This machine basically makes particles move at high speeds until they collide. When this happens, they release a lot of energy and create a lot of interesting effects. Scientists think that energy released by these collisions might be enough to create a black hole. Some people were so worried by this that they even tried to ban the construction of the Large Hadron Collider. Luckily, if a black hole did appear, it would be so small that it wouldn't be able to do anything. Black holes actually produce a lot of energy and release it, often as heat like a furnace. That means that they will fade away when they run out of fuel. 
If one appeared in the experiment, it would instantly burn out and disappear in a billionth of a second. Even if a stable microscopic black hole was created, it would grow so slowly that nothing would happen. Assuming that it survived long enough to absorb the tiny particles around it, a black hole of this size would take about half a trillion years to gain a pound of weight. Black holes could actually be really useful. One with the mass of Mount Everest would emit enough energy to completely power humanity. Even better, black holes are so dense that the one this big would only take up a tiny bit of space. We couldn't create anything as enormous as the naturally occurring black holes, though. Some can weigh hundreds of thousands of times as much as our sun. Recently, scientists have observed a real black hole feast. The sight of a black hole tearing an enormous star apart is one of the most mesmerizing sights in the universe. Heavier and more destructive than anything else in existence, the black hole is both amazing and terrifying. And black holes aren't actually black at all. They're so massive that even light can't escape their pool, meaning that they're actually invisible. Scientists can only find them with special instruments. Most natural black holes are born as stars reach the end of their lifespan. You can picture healthy stars as giant furnaces that burn hydrogen and give off unbelievable amounts of energy. Every second, stars like our Sun produce more energy than humanity has ever produced, which pushes outwards and makes it want to expand. This is what eventually finds its way to Earth as the heat that birthed life on our planet. The only thing stopping this expansion is gravity, a force that basically just pulls objects toward something heavy. Most people know gravity is something that keeps us planted to the ground and stops us from flying off into space. The force of gravity of a star is so strong on stars that it makes them want to implode in on themselves. So, when a star is healthy, the force of gravity pushes inwards, and the energy it releases tries to inflate it like a balloon. These forces mostly cancel each other out and stop it from doing much at all. When a star burns through its fuel, though, nothing is pushing outwards to stop it from collapsing in on itself. Some really big stars make so much energy that they gradually expand into something called a red giant. When they run out of fuel, they cool, and gravity pushes the enormous object into a tiny space. Scientists use our sun to measure how big things in space are. Our sun weighs one solar mass. If a light star, like our sun, implodes, not much happens, which is lucky if you've ever worried about being swallowed up into a black hole. If a red giant around 10 solar masses implodes, though, some incredible things can happen. The collapse of one of these is so intense that it explodes into a supernova, releasing a light as bright as the entire galaxy. Stars that are massive enough to produce supernovas sometimes become black holes. Their weight causes gravity to push down and compact them until they collapse into a black hole in less than a second. The inside of a black hole is mysterious and unexplored, for obvious reasons. One thing we do know is that they're so massive that they can even distort time. One second near the black disk can be equal to weeks or even months on Earth, depending on its size. In 2019, scientists watched a black hole devour a star the size of our Sun. Even though it was 860,000 miles wide, the star was completely trapped in the black hole's gravitational field. For a while, they danced around each other, gradually coming closer and closer. Eventually, though, the star was extinguished in the invisible mouth of the black hole. The black hole sometimes releases beams of energy into space. Sizzling plasma flies out at 6,200 miles per second as the black hole finishes destroying the star. About half of the star's mass is consumed, while the rest is ejected into space. Incredibly, these insatiable titans even consume other black holes when they get big enough. The collision of two black holes was recently witnessed by scientists when one, weighing in at 85 solar masses, met another that was 66 solar masses. When black holes interact, the bigger one always swallows the smaller, adding even more mass to itself. The resulting black hole here 
reach 142 solar masses big. It's hard to believe, but this is still very small for a black hole. It will continue to consume everything around it and might even reach the size of a supermassive black hole at some point. These are unbelievably big and destructive. Our entire galaxy, the Milky Way, rotates around the gravitational field of one of these supermassive black holes. This monster weighs around 4 million solar masses or more than a trillion times our planet. And that isn't even the biggest they get. It's also theorized that black holes can be made without a dramatic explosion. Big gas clouds that weigh hundreds of thousands of solar masses could condense under the force of their gravity to make a star. This object would already be so heavy that it would continue to compact until it became a black hole, skipping the supernova stage. Supermassive black holes are so far away and hard to observe that scientists doesn't have a full understanding of them yet. We don't know much about what happens inside a black hole, leading to a lot of speculation. For decades, people have theorized about how we could use black holes. Knowing that black holes distort time means that someone could use it to travel to the future with the right technology. If it was possible to build a ship strong enough to withstand the powerful gravitational fields, it would be simple. All they would need to do is decide how far they want to go and fly around the outside of the black hole. In the few minutes or hours they spent near the time warp, years could have passed back on Earth. They could be thousands of years old without having aged at all physically. Wow, that's officially a mind-blower. 